My name is Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton Certified Trainer and Associate Professor at the University of Colorado Denver. I'm here to give you a tour of Ableton Live. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is give you a tour of the Ableton Live 10 interface. Now, the first thing you notice is that this doesn't look like any other digital audio workstation you open up. When you first open it up, you have a demo song. But then if you go to File, New Live Set, it brings up the session default, the, the Ableton Live set default. And it consists of something that looks very similar to this. You have two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks, a reverb echo master, and this session view. Now, the session view looks different than any other digital audio workstation you may have used before. Now, this also they also have a, an arrangement view. If I click Tab, we have this arrangement view here, which looks more like a traditional digital audio workstation, except for a lot of times its controls are on the right as opposed to the left. But other than that, it functions very similarly to other digital audio workstations. So I can click Tab to go back to Session View. So I have Session View here and Arrangement View here. I can also toggle these modes by clicking here or just using the tab on my keyboard. The first thing I'm going to show you in Ableton Live 10 is the browser. It's this section in the upper left. If you don't see that, you can press this uh, show and hide browser or hit command option B on a Mac or control alt B on a PC. And that'll show or hide the browser however you may want to work. So in the browser, the first thing we have is collections. This is new in Ableton Live 10. These collections allow you to assign pretty much anything to a collection. It could be a preset, it could be a third party effect or instrument, it can be a clip, it can be a rack that you've made, uh, MIDI or audio, basically anything. And, and things can be in multiple categories and multiple of these collections as well. They're color coordinated and you can rename them. Um, so this one I have orange here, I have yellow, green, blue, I have one labeled third party synths and third party effects. If I click on this yellow one that has nothing in it, I can hit Command R or right click it and click rename and call it what I want. Um, so I can call it, you know, favorite samples. That kind of thing. The next thing we have is categories. So these are everything that comes with Ableton Live, with the exception of plugins, we'll show you any third party plugins you have. But sounds. They allow you to browse based upon category, what you're looking for. So rather than finding a specific instrument or a sampler or um, anything along those lines, this will have all of those categorized. So if I want a bass, I can click on bass and sort of sort through these. And if I want to preview them, I can click on each one and it should play a preview. So if you don't hear the preview, you can go down here and turn on the preview button. Alternately, what you can do is, if that's not indicating you don't want it to automatically preview the clips, you can just uh, click on one and hit the right arrow key on your keyboard. And it'll preview that sound for you, so you don't always have to have that on if you want to. If you want to just kind of scroll through and then preview one in particular. The next things are drums. And these are basically all the drum racks that you have installed. Any of the packs that you have with Ableton Live, any uh, ones you've downloaded, any of the ones that have come with Ableton Live 10, whichever version you have, you can scroll through here and see all of the different drum kits that you have. And to use one, you can just click on one and you can preview it again like I demonstrated. If I want to check out this azimuth kit and hit the right button on my keyboard. I just drag that onto a MIDI track and that will load that drum rack here on my track. Next one we have is instruments. Now these are all the instruments that come with Ableton Live, whichever version you have installed. And so I can see all the instruments here, analog, collision, drum rack, electric, et cetera, et cetera. And if I want to click on the triangle, I can preview different um, categories of presets. And if I want to click on these ambient involving of the wavetable, I can you know, click on each sound preset and uh, hit the right key on my keyboard and preview it that way. Or again, I can click on the preview button. And preview the preset uh, each time I click on or, or 
go drop down with my down arrow. So that's instruments. Audio effects is just like instruments where I have each of the effects that Ableton Live has built into it, depending on which version I have. Um, you can see the ones with the red dot on it. That shows that's in my favorites collection, things that I'll use on a regular basis that I want to just be able to grab really quickly. But along with these, I have different presets, so I can click on them and drag these presets onto an audio track or a track that has an instrument on it. I can drag those on there as well, or the master bus. MIDI effects, uh, these are effects that will affect just the MIDI data. And so those are things like arpeggiator is probably the most common one, but you can transpose tracks, adjust the note length and all kinds of different things. We'll get into that later. If you have Max for Live installed with your Ableton Live, which comes with Ableton Live 10 Suite, you have a whole separate category of Max Audio Effects, Max, Audio, Max Instruments, and Max MIDI Effects. And you can download plenty of these as well as the ones that come with it. Plugins, these are any third-party plugins that you may have installed on your computer. So I click on VST, I can see all these different plugins that I might have on here. I can scroll down and grab, you know, anything from Native Instruments, um, Ozone, any third-party plugins that you have installed on your computer, whether they're VST or audio units if you're using a Mac, they'll show up here under Plugins. So clips, clips are uh, different sounds. They can, they can comprise different things. They can comprise uh, a MIDI clip with an instrument attached and effects. They can comprise um, an audio clip. So these you can save or drag into your track and you can preview them as well. And I can drag them into a track, a MIDI track in Ableton Live, and play that clip. And the last one we have is samples. So these are all the individual audio samples. So these are just audio samples. They could be individual drum hits, they could be synth samples, they can be chords, they can be pitched or percussive, whatever you choose. Now the last one down here is places. Now this is where you can actually add your own folders. So I'll add a bunch of different folders depending on I'm working on, um, as well as packs. So I can search for packs. Packs are bundles of downloadable data from Ableton Live. They can comprise of clips, effects, um, instruments, presets, loops, pretty much anything can be in a pack. And so I can go through and explore those as well. And you can download these from Ableton Live. Whichever version you have probably installed some of these. And so you may want to check and make sure that you have whatever packs you want installed installed on your computer. Now, one thing you can do to check and see which ones you have is you can click on Available Packs. I can click on that. And it'll show me which packs I don't have specifically installed on my computer just yet. And also, just like software programs, packs will have updates to them and you can also update the packs as the updates become available. So you can click on there and update a pack really easily. So I can click on there, it'll download it and I'll click install. It'll install an up for updated version of that Max for Cats on my computer. But down here you can drag and drop folders and it also has your current project on there as well. So this is a handy place to really customize what you see in the browser in Ableton Live. So that's the tour of the Ableton Live browser. One handy feature in Ableton Live is to be able to search all the packs or sounds or drums or any of these things based upon a keyword. So if I go into search, I can if I want to find like a 909 drum kit, I can just in the search field type in 909 and it will limit it down to what I might have that has 909 on it. I click on sounds, drums, So I can see all the different drum kits that are that are 909 based um, samples. I can click on and check out different 909 samples. Go back to drums, maybe a classic 909 kit. If that's a kit I want, I can just click and drag it into the uh, session view and it will create a new 
MIDI track with that 909 built into it. So I have just a few more things to demonstrate on this tour. Uh, first is the in the top bar, we have a few things here that might be of interest to you. Link is for Ableton Link, we can get that later. Um, external as well as for external synchronization. Tap allows you to tap the tempo. So by default, live opens up at 120 beats per minute. You can tap along to your favorite song or something in your head and dial that tempo down into what you're hearing. So you can use the tap function for that. Otherwise, you can adjust the tempo manually here just by dragging up and down with your mouse or clicking on it and entering it into the keyboard. 130. I have the same thing with the time signature. We have click track. We can turn a click track on and off. And we can also set up a count in as well. And we also have the global synchronization, and we'll get into that later. Additionally, the toolbar up here has some other song functions. We have play, stop, arrangement record, uh, session record, and some looping points. And we'll get into that stuff later on as well. The last thing I want to show you on this tour is the detail view. And what that is is what this is on the bottom here. So right now, I don't have anything in my tracks at all. But if I added something, so if I go to packs, uh, skitter and step, and I'm going to grab a MIDI clip here. I'm just going to grab one of these. Now when you're previewing clips or samples or anything like that, you can adjust the volume of the, the preview playback over here by bringing it up and down. This is the preview or cue volume. So I'm going to take this groove and I'm going to drop it into a MIDI track. And so now that I have that dropped into a track, I have the detail view showing up. So what we see here is the device. So this shows me that drum kit that we have. And I can make adjustments with these macros here. But uh, if I want to see the MIDI data, I can do a couple different things. I can double click on the clip, and the detail view changes into the MIDI information that's recorded on that clip. So I can see all the MIDI information they're playing back. <laughs> If I want to toggle between the two without having, without having to double click, I can just click shift tab on my keyboard and toggle between the two. If I want to toggle that without the keyboard, I can go down here to the lower right and click on these tabs here so I can choose what to see in the detail view, whether I want to see the MIDI clip or the audio clip, depending on the audio on the type of track that it is, or the devices that are on that track. So I did the same thing with a sample-based clip. Um, so I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to drag this arpeggiated synth clip into an audio track. So you can see the audio data on the same detail view. If I click on the MIDI clip, it's going to show me the MIDI data. If I click on the audio clip, it's going to show me the audio information that's recorded. If I click Shift-Tab on this one, you'll see there's no audio effects on there. So if I add like an EQ or something like that, and play that clip. I can then toggle between sing that EQ and the audio clip by hitting shift tab. So that's it for this initial tour of Ableton Live.